and again, want to thank our witnesses for participating in this hearing. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there were a lot of things that were brought up during the hearing that we had today that I, I think first should be addressed on some of these. Uh, I know a few members on your side ref referenced uh, a, a, a series of comments made by somebody who's peddling a book right now out of context, talking about the president, as we seem to hear in this, this politically charged environment, unfortunately, where uh, they're going after the president on anything and everything, whether it's valid or not. So as we're talking about whether or not the president downplayed anything relating to coronavirus, Dr. Fauci was just interviewed while we were having this hearing. Dr. Fauci was interviewed. The reporter asked him, so did you get a sense that he was the president or wasn't downplaying this? This is Dr. Fauci from just about an hour ago. Quote, no, no, I didn't. I didn't get any sense that he was distorting anything in my discussions with him. They were always straightforward about the concerns that we had. We related that to him. When he would go out, I'd hear him discussing the same sort of things. He let off and say, we just got through with a briefing with the group from the task force, and we would talk about it. Uh, any, these suggestions that people throw out, anonymous sources that turn out to be debunked. I wish we wouldn't peddle in those kind of conspiracy theories, but I understand this is a hypercharged environment, and I think it's important to point out the facts. We should be fit sticking to the facts. This president's record, by the way, on the military uh, is so much stronger than presidents we've seen recently, especially the previous administration. This president led the charge to rebuild our nation's military, give troops a pay raise, give them the, the support they need. They were dying in training accidents. Our men and women in uniform were dying in training accidents by a five to one margin more than they were dying in combat under the previous administration. This president has had their back on so many of those fronts. Now let's talk about voting. Uh, it seems that some still want to peddle this myth that the post office uh, can't handle uh, the volume, that there was some kind of issue with the post office, that more money's needed for states. First of all, let's go to the post office. We know now, they pointed out in multiple hearings, no one's disputed it, they have more than enough money to not only get through the rest of this year, but even to the middle of next year if they don't get another dime from Congress. Uh, they have enough money to carry out a fair and safe election. There are some states, and this has been pointed out, and I wish this hearing would but there are some states who have gone, who have been able to go identify where they require too late of a time to submit uh, the, po the, the mail-in ballots. For example, some states, one or two days before the election, they can let you mail a ballot in, which means days or maybe weeks after ballots are still coming in. We saw this in California, by the way, with harvesting where more than three weeks after the election, three weeks after the election, there were races that were being overturned, that one person was winning the night of the election by six points. And then a week later, it's closer. And a week later, ballots still keep showing up mysteriously. Three plus weeks later, uh, the ballots are still showing up and then uh, the election results change. And then surprisingly, no more ballots show up after that. Uh, I don't think the, the American people wanna see a case where we have to wait weeks and weeks to get the result from some states. Uh, let's let the states take care of their elections in a proper way, give them the tools they need. By the way, in the CARES Act, Mr. Chairman, we gave states billions of dollars that they still have. Uh, there's probably over $75 billion of the $150 billion we gave states that is still available to those states. Not one state has run out of that money. That money, by the way, Mr. Chairman, can be used to uh, make sure that under COVID, as we have additional needs to safely allow people to vote in person if they need sanitizer if they need masks all of those things are covered under the money we already appropriated uh some people keep throwing billions of dollars around as if this is monopoly money we don't need to send them more money there is money sitting in every state's coffers right now that can eligibly be used to safely run elections if there are additional things that they need uh, if they run out of money then that's a conversation we can have, but not one state has run out of the billions, 150 billion that we sent them. So I think that's important to point out as well. As we heard from uh, a number of our witnesses, we also heard from different studies, talked about different studies that are out there that talk about the problems if, if we were to, for example, mandate. Uh, and I agree with, with so many of the witnesses that 
Americans have more op options than they've ever had before to legally vote. We need to fight to make sure uh, that that's maintained. And if there are problems, let's go and address them in those particular states. Uh, but if you want to go vote in person, that option's there. Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burks, all these doctors have said you can safely do it. And that's your choice, like I've exercised and so many other people have exercised just in these last few months. If you want to mail in a ballot, you can request a mail-in ballot. Each state has their own procedures. Again, they debate these within the states, uh, and the states run those elections, and, and the states know what they need to do to ensure that, that people can legally vote in those states. If we were to have a one-size-fits-all mandate, for example, that every person that's on a voting roll is mailed a ballot, we know any state will tell you. Whatever the percentage is, there are millions of people that will be mailed ballots that aren't legally on the rolls for various reasons. Some might be nefarious. Some are that people move. People move all the time. People die. Uh, that's why you need to clean up your rolls on a regular basis. Los Angeles County, again, was cited over a million and a half people who were illegally on their rolls in one county, uh, and they wouldn't remove them until a judge finally forced them uh, to clean up their rolls. Uh, 28 million, you've heard those numbers, of ballots uh, that just disappeared. Where they are, who knows? Uh, but again, is this the kind of environment we want? No, what we should be doing is working with the states to make sure they have the tools they need. We sent them hundred, over $100 billion. They still have money available to run safe and fair elections in person. Uh, many of them expanded opportunities for voting in other ways as well. Uh, but this, this idea that the federal government should make states run a California-type system uh, when, again, weeks and weeks after the election in California, results were changing, uh, that's, that's not something that instills confidence among voters. Uh, it's, it's not only important that we ensure the franchise of the vote, uh, but also the confidence that when you cast that vote, that nobody else is going to be able to go and nullify your vote with an illegal vote, or that you're going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get the result. Uh, this is America. We love participating in democracy. We promote democracy. But we also believe in this peaceful transition of power, and that means uh, we respect the results that we get, uh, not denying the results of an election, getting the results uh, of the election on election night, and then continuing to move our country forward. Uh, so with that, I hope we would be able to work together on those challenges and address these other false issues that have come up to identify them as well. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.